In this video tutorial for Grand Prix Race Manager, we will cover step 2, which is going through the software settings to set your preferences when using the software. These settings can turn on or off certain features, so they affect what is displayed within the software and how it will behave. This tutorial is using version 22 of the software. This step applies to all versions of Grand Prix Race Manager, but earlier versions may have slightly different settings available. Note, I will be using the Pro version of the software. If you are a light user, you will see fewer settings, options on this screen to choose from. To get to the software settings screen, go to the overview tab of the main screen and click on the shortcut button for step 2. That will open up the software settings screen. This screen has several tabs to it. We will start off with the general tab and go section by section. In the theme section, the software lets you choose between a light or dark display theme. The light theme is the traditional theme with light screen backgrounds. The dark theme provides dark backgrounds. The darker backgrounds may provide less eye strain. You can change the theme at any time. In the race vehicle section, you can select which type of race vehicle that you will be running. If you are using a vehicle type that is not listed here, you can select the other option. Then you can specify the type of vehicle. In the racer images section, if you wish to use photos of your racers or their race vehicles with the software, you can check the enable racer images box. Then you can specify the maximum width and height of the photos. If a racer does not have a photo, the default racer image will be used. You can change what image is being used by default by clicking on the button and selecting your own image. Note, Racer Images is a feature only available in the Pro version of the software. For the Custom Fields section, the software has an extra data field when registering racers. By default, it will store the vehicle name, but you can choose to use this field for any type of data for each racer. You can change the label for that data field, so anywhere in the software where that data field is displayed, you will see that label. Under the Miscellaneous section, you can set your date format preference. This will affect the display of dates anywhere in the software screens and reports. On the Track tab, there are three sections. The Lanes section allows you to set the number of lanes for your track setup. If using a timing system, this should match the number of lanes for the timer. You can label your lanes by numbers, colors, or create custom labels. If you want to set up color or custom labels, select that option. Then click on the Customize button. On the Lane Labels screen, you can label each lane however you like. You can also set how each lane will be colored on the racing screen. If you want to set the font colors for each lane, uncheck the first box. Then you can click on the font color button for a lane and select the color that you want. To set the background colors for each lane, uncheck the second box. Then you can click on the background color button for a lane and select the color that you want. Once done, click on the Save button. For the lanes in use section, if you have a bad lane, you can uncheck the box for that lane. This will keep the software from scheduling racers to run in that lane. Important note, if you disable a lane after you have created a schedule, you would need to recreate that schedule. In the scale speed section, you can opt to display the scale speed of the race vehicles, assuming that you are using a timing system. Scale speed is the speed that you would seem to be going if you shrunk down and were the driver of a race vehicle. It has no bearing at all on the race standings. It is just for the U and A factor. If you are not using a timing system, you can disable this feature by unchecking the Enable Scale Speed Display box. Otherwise, you can select what units to display the scale speed with. You can also set the track length. This is the distance from your start pins to the finish line. The length does not need to be exact. A good estimate will suffice. Then you can set the vehicle scale. For the Pinewood Derby type cars, the typical scale used is 1 inch equals 25 inches. If you wanted to display the actual speed, you would enter a scale of 1 inch equals 1 inch, but where's the fun in that? On the Schedules tab, you can set a couple of scheduling options. When viewing the race schedules, you can specify how you want to see the racers displayed. You can opt to see both racer names and their vehicle numbers, or just the vehicle numbers. Now for master scheduling. 
Master scheduling is simply the software taking all of the group schedules for a round and collating them together to give you one big schedule. Racers still only go head to head against other racers in their race group. The software will just alternate through the heats of the different group schedules. This keeps racers more involved in the whole race, instead of waiting around until it is their group's turn to race or getting bored after their group is done racing. Bored racers are more likely to get into mischief. If you wish to use the master scheduling feature, click on the enable master scheduling box. If you later decide that you don't want to use that feature, you can come back and uncheck that box. Another benefit of master scheduling is that it minimizes racers running in back-to-back -back heats. Note, master scheduling is a feature only available in the pro version of the software. When you open the standings tab, you will see several sections. In the race scoring method section, you have the choice of scoring by times or by points. Points are based on the finish order of the vehicles, where one point is for first place, two points for second place, and so on. The winners are the ones with the least total amount of points. If you want to see the pros and cons of scoring by times or by points, you can refer to the software's help file. However, if you won't be using a timing system, then you would want to select to score by points. In the standings tabulation section, you can specify just how the software will tabulate the standings. If scoring by times, the standings can be tabulated by average, cumulative, or single fastest time. Additionally, you can throw out the worst time for each racer, if you wish. Throwing out the worst time is recommended if the race crew, not the racers, are loading the vehicles onto the track, as the racers will have no control over how their vehicle is staged. If scoring by points, the standings will be tabulated cumulatively. Now, for the competition group structure section. You can enable the use of subgroups. Subgroups are just subsets of a race group and do not affect who races who. Subgroups only allow you to break down the group standings into finer detail, if needed. Subgroups only apply when you are scoring by times. If you do not wish to use subgroups, then uncheck the Enable Subgroups box. In the tie-breaking section, the software does allow you to apply some tiebreaker rules to be used in case you have ties in the standings. This may let you break ties without doing any further racing. Though, if you wish to use tiebreaker rules, we recommend not enabling the tiebreakers until your final round of racing. Only worry about ties when the trophies are on the line. If this means that you will advance extra racers to any follow-on rounds, then just advance those extra racers. It is possible that even after the tiebreaker rules are applied, that you will still have ties remaining. In that case, you should do a head-to-head -head tiebreaker for those racers. To enable tiebreaker rules, check the Enable Tiebreaker Rules box. The tiebreaker rules shown here are for time scoring. When scoring by points, a different set of tiebreaker rules will be used. When using tiebreaker rules, you can specify how many of the top places to apply those rules to. If you don't want the audience to see the tiebreaker codes when you display the standings, you can check the Hide Tiebreaker Codes box. For more information on the tiebreaker rules, please refer to the software's help file. Note, tiebreaker rules is a feature only available in the pro version of the software. Another fun thing you can do at your event is called a turtle race. Some may call this a best gas mileage race. With a turtle race, the goal is to be the slowest car down the track. In the turtle standings section, if you check the must finish all heats box, then only racers that cross the finish line for each of their heats will be included in the turtle standings. You do have some other standings options that you can select. The first option is to be able to exclude racers from the standings. So, if you have racers that for some reason did not pass your check-in inspection, you can let them race but not be eligible for a trophy. You can do that by checking the be able to exclude racers box. When you register these racers, or even later on, you can flag them as excluded. Excluded racers will be added to the race schedule for their group, but they will not be displayed in the race standings. Note, excluding racers is a feature only available in the pro version of the software. The final option in this section is to be able to exclude grand finals winners. The software gives you the option to run a grand finals round of the fastest racers from your different race groups. 
However, some don't want the winners of the grand finals round to win two trophies, one for their original race group and one for the grand finals. Instead, they want grand finals winners to only win a trophy for the grand finals round. To exclude grand finals winners, you would check the exclude grand finals winners box. Then you can specify the number of top grand finals finishers to be excluded from their original race group standings. You should set this equal to the number of trophies that you will be awarding for the grand finals. Those winners will be removed from the standings of their original race group and will only show up in the standings for the grand finals round. This essentially bumps someone else in their original race group up to get a trophy. Note, excluding grand finals winners is only available in the pro version of the software. The last tab on this screen is for awards. These are awards that are not based only on the speed standings, but are other awards that you choose to specify. There is more on this in step 6 of the tutorial videos. Once you've created an award, you have the ability to specify the winner for it if you wish to do so. The software will provide you with a list of racers to select from. The sort winners list by option allows you to sort that racer list either by last name or by vehicle number. Select whichever is more convenient for you. Now, let's go over the advanced software settings that are available. Click on the advanced button in the lower left corner of the screen to open up the advanced software settings screen. On the general tab, there is the racer name display option. You may prefer to enter racer information in last name than first name order or the other way around. For competition groups and subgroups, you can change how those are labeled throughout the software to better match the structure of your organization. When you delete out any data in bulk, at that time the software can automatically make a backup of your data file. If you don't want the software to do that auto backup, you can uncheck the bulk delete auto backup box. Don't worry, you can still opt to do that auto backup at the time you do a bulk delete. Note, this feature is only available in the pro version of the software. For all screens designed for audience viewing, you can open those in full screen mode. Full screen mode removes the top title bar from the screen and the screen borders, maximizing the other information on the screen. This does mean that you will not be able to minimize these screens or move them around. If that is not what you want, uncheck the open and full screen mode box. Note, this feature is only available in the pro version of the software. In the audience display screens, you also have the option to only display the first name and last initial of the racers. If you are live streaming your race or posting video of the race online, this option allows you to protect the racers by not showing their full names. The root folder location is where you specified to install data, sample, and image files. If you move that folder, you should update the software so it can find those files. Navigate to the new folder, select it, and then click on the select button. If using racer photos and you wish to change the location that the software looks for those images, click on the location button and select the new folder. Note, this feature is only available in the pro version of the software. Migration to a new computer has been made easier with the export and import features for the software settings. Export the software settings file from the old computer and then import it into the new computer. You can also create multiple settings files if you run with different tracker timer configurations. Then import the settings file that you need at the time. Exporting your settings can also be handy if you have a problem in the software. We may ask you to export your settings and send us that file. This can help us diagnose the issue or to replicate it. Note, importing a settings file is a pro-only feature. The racing tab has options that affect the racing screen. When the heat results are displayed on the racing screen, you can opt to display those by the finish order or you can keep them in lane order. You can display a logo on the racing screen if you wish. To do so, click on the enable racing logo box. Click on the button to select the logo image and then click on the open button. You will then see a thumbnail image displayed of your logo. You can select the background color for the logo section by clicking on the color button, select the color, and then click on the select button. You can adjust a maximum logo size as it will appear on the racing screen. Moving on to the standings tab, the software does have a built-in timing audit that will look for unusual conditions in your race times. 
If the audit finds a possible problem, it will let you know the heats that you should examine. The results may have an explanation, so you may not necessarily need to rerun those heats. To use the timing audit, check the Enable Timing Audit box. Then you can set the minimum confidence level. For statistical purposes, the standard is using a 95% confidence level, but you can make that more or less strict if you wish. Note, this feature is only available in the pro version of the software. There are external apps, like our Race Effects and Race Replay software, that have the ability to interface with Grand Prix Race Manager, so the apps can work together to enhance your race. You can enable this interface on the External Apps tab by checking the Enable External App Communications box. You can test the communications to these software packages by using the Test Message button. You can also test the specific messages that will be sent to those apps. Just select which app to test and then click on the button to send the applicable message. Note, this feature does require the pro version of the software. The last tab is the Derby Web tab. Derby Web is an add-on to Grand Prix Race Manager that allows you to access certain race data via Wi-Fi, even on smartphones and tablet computers. If you purchased a subscription to Derby Web from our website, check the Enable Derby Web Interface box. Select the folder where Derby Web is installed to and then click on the Open button. This will cause Derby Web to use the same data file that Grand Prix Race Manager is using. Data may need to be refreshed in Grand Prix Race Manager since Derby Web can make changes to competition groups, registration, and awards data. If you check the Enable Data Refresh box, Grand Prix Race Manager will periodically do an auto-refresh so you see the current data. You can set how often that auto-refresh will occur in seconds. With Derby Web, you can use that app to change passwords for user accounts that have access to Derby Web. If you change the admin password and then forgot it, you can click on the Reset Admin Password button to set it back to the default password. Last of all, on the Advanced Software Settings screen, we have the Reset NAG Messages button. This will re-enable any of the NAG messages that you had disabled. When you change any settings, make sure to click on the Save button. For more information on the software settings, you can click on the Help button. When back to the main screen, notice that the completed box for Step 2 has been checked for you. This completes our video for Step 2 software settings. Stay tuned for our video for Step 3, where we will cover the report settings.